Good evening. Today I'll be doing a little presentation on just some very basic info on wildland fires. Nothing too crazy. Just some, you know, food for thought and some of the generic terms and that kind of stuff. So objective, some of these I don't really have a slide for or talked about. But we're going to be going over some terminology, kind of the three classes of wildfire scene size up stuff, and the equipment. Alright, so. Kind of the, the terms we're working with. Origin, oddly enough, is where the fire started. Wind direction pushes the fire, you know, in whichever direction it pushes. Rear of the fire is backed by the origin. Island is you know, an area where the fire burnt around, whether it be a low spot, high spot, something where fire didn't burn here. Fingers are kind of the leading edges of fire. Little peninsulas almost where it's not, you know, flush here. Head of the fire is kind of its broadest point, its farthest out point, kind of the tip of the main body of the fire. A spot fire is a little extra know throwing embers and starting out ahead of the fire or you know out little fires that are starting out away from the main body of the fire because of ash or embers or that kind of stuff and in the pocket is little areas where the fire is hasn't burned completely up yet so kind of between fi the fingers for example here's a pocket here's a pocket Here's a finger, here's a finger, and here's a finger. And then left and right flank. This is always referred to from where the origin of the fire is. So from the origin, the left flank's on the left side, the right flank's on the right side. If we're up here doing stuff on this end, this is still the left flank, and this is still the right flank. Everything is referred to from from the origin looking towards the head of the fire. Kind of like anatomical stuff for my EMS people out there where it's not your right, it's the patient's right or the patient's left, that kind of thing. A couple kind of the main types of fire they talk about. Creeping fire. That's this little kind of stuff where it's not really burning all that fast. It's burning grass, the leaves. It's not getting up into the trees. A couple inches high. Real kind of slow crawling around. Nothing too exciting. Surface fire is kind of like creeping fire, except the flames are usually higher. There's more of them. It's moving a bit quicker. It's getting to some low grass, low grass, low bushes, that kind of stuff. Kind of starting to kind of maybe climb up the base of trees. Maybe not involving all the trees. Maybe not catching the trees themselves on fire. But a little more aggressive, a little hotter, a little quicker moving, that kind of thing. And then crown fires. This is where the fire is actually up in the trees. Blowing overhead. This is the kind of stuff you can't put out. When you get a crown fire really going... It's just kind of pick a spot, make a stand, hopefully, create fire breaks. But when it's, you know, up, blown through the tops of trees, it's not a winning, winnable fight. So words to know. A fire break is a non-combustible break in the vegetation. In that can be natural fire breaks or man-made breaks. It could be a river, a stream, a road, a big parking lot. You could have, you know, the dozers come in and build a fire break, that kind of stuff. So you can have natural man-made fire breaks, but that's what they are. Anchor point is an advantageous point to start fire attack. And I'll we'll get to, you know, some Good examples of an anchor point, but it's a nice solid base of operations. Something where you're not really at risk of the fire burning back around you or coming back on you. Where you can kind of set up and really get started. And I should clarify, this isn't a PowerPoint to be talking about. 
you know, the big California fires and that stuff. That's not what this is about. This is for, you know, your little Midwest couple of volunteer fire departments where every once in a while, you know, someone's burning trash or some leaves or something and it gets away on them. Little, little stuff like that. Still important, still important to talk about, but some of this stuff really doesn't apply to what big, big, like California fires. And at the same time, some of their stuff doesn't really reach and apply to us. And then backfires. Those are fires set ahead of the main fire to use up combustibles. That's where you get the drip torch and you burn off the grass and the leaves and kind of start helping create those fire breaks. Or you have the dozer go through and then you burn from where the dozer burnt back towards the fire. So it burns up and hopefully you kind of widen your fire break there. General principles. Usually you want to fight the fire from the burnt side. It's already burnt. It's not going to come back on you, and it's not going to burn you, because it's already burnt up all it can do. It's burnt up all it's going to use. So you're safe here, but if you're out here doing stuff, and the wind kicks up or changes, you're in trouble here. Here, eh, might get a little smoky, but you're fine. Wildland gear doesn't equal structural gear. I get it. Sometimes it's easy to throw on your regular gear or just your bunker pants and go out, but it sucks. I'm speaking from experience. If you have a wildland fire, take the time to throw on the jumpsuit and the boots or the pants and shirt and the boots. It's better for you long term. And try not to get the truck stuck. Every year we seem to have somebody somewhere take the brush truck out here or think, eh, the ground's solid enough, we can get the engine out here and get something stuck. No. Best case scenario, you look really embarrassing, people laugh at you, and you get towed out. Worst case scenario, the winds change and you burn up a fire truck or something. So, Yeah, stuff happens. Just be smart about it. The whole getting the truck stuck thing gets me to basically right tool, right job. If it's been really dry and really solid, and you can drive the brush truck out there and it'll work and not get stuck, go for it. Use the brush truck. If, you know, maybe it's a little wet, but the ATV or the UTV can get out there and do the job, you know, maybe that's the right choice. Or if it's, you know, really woody and muddy and gross and you really can't get any wheeled vehicles back there or even tracked vehicles, sometimes it sucks, but you gotta do it all by hand. So, you know, food for thought. Pick the right tool for the right job. So, some of the info that goes into size ups. What type of fire it is. Is that a creeping fire? Is it, you know, one of those crown fires? How big is it? Is it a football field? Two football fields? Is it you know, about 10 yards by 10 yards? Is it like a little thing in a ditch somewhere? Rough estimates. In any structures of concern, is it burning towards a farm or a subdivision? Or, you know, stuff like that. Are you in, in a cornfield, but it may be getting up into the trees in the near future, and then you have a whole other problem to worry about? Stuff like that. So... Let's look at some theoretical things here. Here is our fire. Started in the ditch line. It's burning up this way. Let's say the wind is kind of coming up towards the northeast, kind of northeast corner. The wind's pushing it this way. Your anchor point would be here, this road. Solid, natural fire break. It's already burnt here. It's not going to re-burn back here. This is a good place to start. you got your left flank and your right flank and you can you know, work around however either one team on each side or work around you know whatever it's short let's say this is you know a creeping fire these these fields are all barren it's already been harvested it's just the low stubble kind of leaves and stuff from harvest time 
And it's burning this way. I mean, got a house here. Some trees up here, but if you can't really get a handle on this, by the time it gets up here, you got bigger problems. So really, nothing of real concern here. One more. Keeping it a little short presentation tonight. Here we got the railroad tracks. Every once in a while they come through, have their big, you know, railroad grinders, grind the rails down, clean them up, straighten them out, that kind of stuff. And they'll throw sparks and they'll start little fires all along the railroad track. So you got a little one here, a little one here. You can see they just kind of, you know, little fires along the way. What do we got to worry about? Well, looks pretty green. Pretty small. Let's say there's really no wind. Nice, calm day. The worst part about this one is getting access to here, because here's the highway. You know, this is up, you know, on a railroad embankment. You can't, you know, drive across this. You can, you know, maybe drive a brush truck across here and get to these two. Maybe drive the brush truck here and come up and get to this one, maybe. And this one kind of sucks. So, there's nothing wrong with calling up dispatch and saying, can you get the train stopped? We got a bunch of little wildfires along the tracks. Have them stop the trains, and then use these as your access. If you have little ATVs, drive them down the tracks. Walk in, put this one out, walk up, put this one out. Send your crew up here, put this one out and this one. And so on. If you start running out of manpower for all these little fires, call in the next department, mutual aid. Have them start working, you know, here and work here. While you work here and work up and meet in the middle. Little stuff like that. As far as those extra exposures, it's pretty green. You got kind of this little fire break here. You got a nice big highway here, so it's not going to get over here probably. Unless something really, really bad happens. Trees are way over here. Fields look pretty pretty empty. So this is more just, you know, a case of divide and conquer. A couple little fires. Exercise and crew management. If you need if this is bigger than this one. Maybe focus on the bigger ones. And then clean up the little ones or however you go about it. Food for thought. Other than that, hope this is pretty short, sweet, to the point. Just the basics. If there's anything you'd like to see, as always, let me know.